Lord God, eternal king. You are the living one. You are the mighty God. You are the El Shaddai and the king of glory. You are the beginning and the end of all things. By you we live and move and have our being. We thank you because it is by your power that you are here today. We are here to hear from you, O Lord. We are here to be blessed by you. We are here to be strengthened by you. Father, we are here, O Lord, O God, that the purpose of our being will be fulfilled and established while we are still alive. Speak to us, O Lord. Anything and everything in us that needed to be removed and destroyed. By the power of your mind, Father, I pray you will do it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, oh God, I pray for every brother and every sister, every child and every adult in this very church that is under the yoke of the enemy, the affliction of the enemy, uh, the torment uh, and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, and the uh, persecution of the wicked one. Liberate them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Open our eyes, O God, that we will be able to know and to enjoy the riches of glory we have through Christ Jesus. Bless us as we share together now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. Today we are talking on something very, very important. And every word of God is important. The title of my message today is Believer's Authority and Mountain Moving Faith. Believer's Authority and Mountain Moving Faith. When we talk about the believer, we're talking about the man and the woman of authority. When we talk about the believer, we are talking about somebody that already had an encounter with God. Somebody that has now taken of God for himself and for herself. We're talking about somebody who is a child in the family of God. And who now has right to everything that belongs unto the father, God. When we talk about the believer, we are talking about somebody who doesn't just belong to a family but have right to make use of anything and everything that belongs to that family. We're talking about somebody who, by virtue of relationship and sonship in that family, is now at par, the same level with the father. Jesus said, my father walketh, and so I walk. And the word of God made us to know that God bestowed authority upon the Son, Jesus Christ. And the Son bestowed authority upon all of his followers and uh, uh, disciples. You need to understand then that by virtue of you being a child of God, you have control, authority, and power over the world. You have authority over the devil. You have authority over any and every other human being that is not in the same authority level with you. You have authority over living things and non-living things. You have authority, authority over every work of God's creature. And the Bible makes us to know that the power of God is resting upon the people of the Lord. And that is why Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 10. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold, I give unto you power. That word power is authority. The scripture is referring to over the devil, over the demons, over principalities, over powers, and over all of their agents, no matter who they are. And it says, I give unto you authority or power to tread on serpents, no matter what that serpent symbolizes that is going to sting you, that is going to poison you, that is planning to take your life, you have power and authority over them. 
It says, over scorpions you have authority and power. We have been told that scorpions can be more dangerous than evil serpents. And yet, God says, you have authority over the, the scorpions of life in Jesus' name. And then it says, some of them you may not even know their name. Because they operate at different levels in different ways and different times. The Bible says, and over all the power of the enemy. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible made us to know that uh, strategies will be used by the enemy. But then he says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is the believer's authority. And with you having this authority, then you move by faith, you walk by faith, you act by faith, you stand by faith, you operate by faith and in faith. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23 tells us, and Jesus answered said unto them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Why is it that the believers are always, always at the receiving end? The receiving end of the attacks of the enemy. The receiving end of the oppression of the enemy. The receiving end of sicknesses and infirmity. When we actually have authority over everything. The Bible says that if you will speak unto a mountain with faith by faith, that the mountain will listen to you and we move. Many years back, many years back, uh, we had messages like this and there was this particular individual, and I think I told us this year before, that had a message like this and then had a particular machine that was not working in the house. And then I believe he was trying to put his faith to work. And then went to the machine, laid his hands upon the machine. How many of you know that as a believer you are anointed? I say you are anointed. Whether you know it or not, the anointing is there. Look at this. This is what I'm trying to say. This keyboard is here. And you look at it, you don't know how to play it. The keyboard is useless to you. But the keyboard is there. Whether you press the key and then it brings sound or not, the sound is already there. All you need to do is just get there and then press it and then sound will come out. Inside of you is resident the power of the living God. All you need to do is just tap into it and then begin to operate on the basis of it. Jesus said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou removed, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. The Bible is saying that you are in charge and in control of the whole universe. Because you will have whatsoever that you have said. Luke chapter 10 verses 1 and 2. Make us to know that Christ has given us power to reorder any adverse situation around us as believers. He has given us power and authority to act on his behalf. Listen to this. Please pay attention. I'm going to read that passage before, but before I read it, listen to this very very important anytime you are acting in faith anytime you are acting in authority remember it is not your power it is not your authority you are simply representing heaven somebody didn't get that and all you are doing is that what heaven commands you to do you are doing it. Whatever happens thereafter is not your cup of tea. Don't worry yourself. As an ambassador of a nation, you do just what your president at home tells you to do in the foreign land because you are the representative, as a matter of fact, you are the president of your country in that foreign land. So, anything you are saying there is as good as your president saying it. Because you are always communicating with your president. And as a believer, we have our president in heaven. I say we have our president in heaven. And we are his ambassadors here on earth. So, anytime
when you see somebody sick and then you are confronting sickness and infirmity, look beyond yourself. Look beyond your own ability. Look beyond your own strength. Look beyond your own environment. Just see yourself as an obedient servant, a true ambassador, and then know that, number one, God is invisible, and the sickness you are dealing with is invisible. But then you know that God is powerful than this problem, and then on the basis of that, with the authority of God vested upon you, you speak unto the situation, and the situation has no choice. I said the situation has no choice. It will move in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10 verses 1 and 2. And after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. And sent them two and two before his face into every city and the place where himself would come. Listen, where Jesus would have gone, he sent the people first. He sent them. Therefore said he, said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the harvest, that the Lord of the harvest, that ye will send forth laborers into the vineyard. Christ did not allow any mountain to frustrate or hinder his good works while he was physically here on earth. And we, his followers and ambassadors, should not allow anything to be on our way either. Mountains are obstacles. Mountains are hindrances. There are oppositions that are raised up by the devil, the enemy of our life, to hinder the believer from accomplishing God's set goal for their life. To hinder them from progressing in life and in ministry. To hinder them in their marriage and in their life career. Pharaoh and the Red Sea stood as obstacles before Israel. But the Lord overthrew them all. Amen. Amen. God called and used Moses in removing the obstacles. I pray God will use you. I said God will use you. In the name of Jesus. Enemies were on their way. As they were on their way to Canaan. But the Lord dealt with them all. They did not run away from the mountains. They met on their way. They confronted it. Don't run away from the mountains before you. And this is what people don't understand. I've had some people that say, ah, the demons in this particular part of the, of the world is the worst in the whole wide world. Who told you? And then another one will say, ah, the devils in this place is like no other place. It's because of what you are going through. And some people, because of what they are going through, they will relocate. They will run to another city. They will run to another place. Don't run. Stop running. Stand and face that problem. Because the problem will give way. It will run for, 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 for you in Jesus' name. Don't run away. Just confront it. Israel became confused not knowing what to do. And God said, move forward. Move forward. Move forward. And as they kept moving forward, there is no victory in standing still. There is no victory in fearing. Listen, there is no victory in turning your back. Each and every time a warrior turns his back, he ends up being defeated. Face the battle and you will overcome in Jesus' name. I look at three points. Number one, the personality and position of believers in Christ. Who are you? Who are you? The personality and position of believer in Christ. The Bible makes us to know that we are not slaves, but we are sons and daughters of the Lord. John 1, uh, 12 says, For as many as received him, to them God gave the power to become the sons of God. I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. And if you are a child of God, you have the power of God at your disposal. Next time you see any, any situation that can be confusing or troubling, just take authority. Just take authority. We belong unto God. You don't belong to the devil. First John chapter 3, verses uh, 8 through to 10 tells us, yes, there are children of the devil, there are children of God. 
And you need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. Your personality and position. Amen? That's why the Bible made, made us to know, if you don't mind, open your Bible with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I look at the, I look at the first verse there. It says, but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. You belong unto God. I say you belong unto God. Amen. Let no devil threaten you. Let no demon uh, uh, make you intimidated. Let nobody make you look inferior. Don't let any situation make you look like you don't belong. You are a true child of the living God and heaven recognizes you for as long as you're not living in sin. You are a child of God. You belong unto God. Romans chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 makes us to know that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are heirs of God. Children of the Most High God. And we are joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ, verses 16 and 17. There the Bible says, The Spirit is a bearer witness with our spirit. Can you finish that for me? I didn't hear you. That we, we, you and I, we are the children of God. And if children then hears, he is of God and joins us with Christ. He so if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Praise the Lord. So you we are sons. We belong unto God. We are hears of God. We are ambassadors of Christ. Know yourself. You are ambassadors of Christ. When you know who you are, you'll be able to know when to make good use of the authority that God has given unto you. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18. There the Bible tells us, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and are given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, now, now, then we are, what's the next word? Ambassadors, representatives. Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ, in Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. Please, the only thing that can make you unknown in the kingdom of God is sin. Flee away from sin, run away from it, and then the grace and the power of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. You need to understand that by virtue of being a child of God, we are new creature. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians 5.17 says that therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. It says, behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. And then the Bible tells us in Second Kings chapter 2 verse 9 that we are priests and kings. We are priests and kings. You need to know yourself. As I, as, as I tell you who you are, you need to be happy in yourself. You need to rejoice in yourself. I am happy because I'm not just an ordinary person. I'm a great person in the kingdom of God. I'm a great person in the family of God. Amen. Look at it. Second Peter chapter 2, verses, uh, verse 9. It says there, 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. It says, um, The Lord knoweth, the Lord knoweth how hmm, to deliver, I think I got the wrong reference here. Um, excuse me. Second Peter, first Peter rather, not second. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But ye are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him 
who hath called you out of darkness into where? Into his marvelous light. So you need to understand that you are priests and kings. Priests make intercession and offering for the people. Kings rule and reign. Amen. Kings rule and reign. You are in charge. Tell someone next to you and say, I am in charge. And that's who you are. As a believer, you are called Christian. Christian. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verse 26, there we see the believers referred to as Christians. Followers of Christ referred to as Christians. Servants of the living God referred to as Christians. Verse 26, Acts of the Apostles, 11, 26 says, And when he had found him he brought him unto antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled together with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called christians first in antioch listen to this look up here the believers are called what christians if you write the word christ and then Give a space and then you put I A N. Christ, we know who Christ is, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Helper, our Shield, our Intercessor. And then you now put I A N. It is when you join I A N to Christ that you have Christian. But when you separate I A N from Christ, I A N simply means without Christ, I. A, I am, and nothing. Without Christ, I am nothing. But I become somebody because I am in partnership with Christ Jesus. Amen. Always remember, without Christ, you are nothing. You without, that's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So, without Christ, you are nothing. But when you are joined together with Christ, the sky is your limit. I said the sky is your limit. As believers, we have been lifted up and exalted to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. The Bible says far above principalities and above power. So you are not just the person we see walking on the ground. In the spirit realm, you are operating from a very high place. And understand yourself that way. Please pay attention. You must have heard some people in their time, they are normal human beings. But in the middle of the night, they begin, they grow wings and they begin to fly. And they begin to do some funny stuff. Now, if they can do that with evil power, listen, listen. If they can afflict people and torment people and oppress people, in the middle of the night, sometimes even in the day, listen to this, with evil power, we have the real power of God. And the power of God we have in us is greater than their power. And if we be followers of them, or, 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 or followers of Christ, who is he that will hurt us? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 1. And I hope you are writing down all these things that we are talking about. And then you go back home and look at yourself again. And then begin to claim your authority and your power in Christ Jesus. Chapter 1 verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, that's talking about Christ Jesus, right? 
Now, jump to chapter 2 and now look at verse 1 of chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 1. And what's the next word? I didn't hear you. And you. Turn to someone and say, and you. Say, third person, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And then jump to verse 6. Jump to verse 6. After quickening you and had raised us up together, hallelujah, and made us to sit together we are now in heavenly places we are in Christ Jesus hallelujah chapter 1 gave us that great revelation of the position of Christ in the heavenly places and then he came down to chapter 2 and now says and you not just Christ because we are here and joined here together with Christ Jesus and you had he quickened when something is dead and dormant is useless but when that thing is quickened it comes alive and the Bible says you are alive and you are the quickened and he has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above principalities and powers and then i want to let you know again your place in christ as a believer your life is hid in christ and the life of christ is hid in god this is what i'm talking about when christ came he had his life hid in god in order for the devil to overcome Christ, who is the first to be overcome? God will have to be overcome before Christ can be overcome. But can the devil overcome God? It's not possible. Now, listen, listen. This is the next stage of it now. The Bible now says that you and I have been hid in Christ Jesus. That then means when somebody looks at me, they don't see me in the spirit realm. Yes, in the physical, you see Pastor Michael, but in the spirit realm, you see Christ Jesus. You try to attack me in the spirit realm because you're going to use your evil power. You don't see me. The person that shows up is who? Christ Jesus. In, in Babylon, when the king of Babylon threw the three Hebrews into the fire, they thought they threw human being into the fire, not knowing that this human being are hid in Christ Jesus. The moment they got into the fire, the real song, the king of glory showed up, the fourth person in glory, and the king saw it. And he said, are there not three that were thrown into the fire? He said, behold, there are four people in the fire, and the look of the fourth one is like the sun of God and yet that was in the Old Testament Jesus has not been born at that time your life is hidden in Christ Jesus if anybody is going to overcome you then they have to overcome Christ Jesus and then after overcoming Christ Jesus then they overcome God before they can get into you I am secured I am secured I am secured that is a true life insurance. That is the real insurance that we need. Hide yourself in this God. That is who you are. That is your place. That is your position in Christ Jesus. That is why when you walk on the street, you walk like a king. When you talk to anybody, you talk like a king. And then when anybody says, who are you? Who are you? Say, I am a king. And then they say, oh, you're from Africa? No, no, say, I'm not talking about African king right here. African king are subject to some other authority. I am a man of authority. My position is from heaven. When you speak like that, I don't know how many of you were here. One of the revival services we had about three weeks ago. And one little boy, a teenager here, uh, came out giving a testimony. He was in their school. It was at their school. 
that they were talking and then he was talking about God. You better talk about God. I say you better talk about God because you don't know who is next to you. The person next to him may be an angel. A small boy. He